Hello everyone, this is Mark with Timber by Mark, and let's make some giant knitting needles. These ones are Purple Heart with Maple Burl caps. They're about 26 inches long, so I cut them about 28, and I went ahead and cut them by hand because I put my chops up. But I uh, cut them about two and a half by two and a half uh, to give myself some room. And here I am just uh, squaring them off and cutting them off with my uh, carcass saw. Here's a little tool that I find very handy to find uh, centers. It's like a $7 uh, tool and it's really helpful. <clears throat> so I squared up everything before I even get started. And then I put a little punch uh, to mark center for me and it's a lot easier to put on lathe. So right here I'm tapping it in, getting it all ready, checking for square. And now we're gonna round it out. I had to sharpen my uh, roughing gouge a few times. Uh, purple heart's quite hard, but it turns pretty nice. It leaves a pretty good finish. But since these are so long and I don't have a real long tool rest, I had to move it quite a few times. The idea I got is you never really see any kind of knitting needles like that and people are making these really large blankets with uh, this thick wool and they need these huge knitting needles. So I was like, hey, I had some scrap left over from the giant frame, let's make some giant knitting needles. So here I'm just continuing rounding it out. I didn't have too much of a problem with getting some wobble in the center because the uh, purple heart's so hard and stiff. Uh, I might have got a little bit of chatter in the middle, but uh, it wasn't enough that I couldn't get out with an abrasive. That's a little jig I made with the scroll saw that gave me the uh, radius. And here I am putting it in a couple different spots to give me a uh, reference. And that really helped out quite a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the first half and get it to my uh, dimension that I wanted which is 50 mil and I left it a little bit wide so I when I went and sanded it it could allow for uh, me to take down a little bit more there I per periodically check to make sure that it's uh, not getting too small on me make sure it's perfectly uh, the same uh, consistency throughout here's a took a skew to kind of get that end a little bit finer finish. It worked pretty well. Uh, not as well as I hoped. Kind of uh, was taken off a little too much and got a little tear out, but it worked out okay in the end. I started out with about 100 grit Abernat and worked my way all the way across. Dust extraction is pretty key here because this stuff dust is super fine and I've turned it and not had dust extraction and that stuff gets everywhere. It's like a layer of dust throughout your entire shop. So I highly recommend some sort of dust extraction even if it's a shop vac. Which I have used and it works quite well. But I would suggest getting a uh, quality shop vac. I uh, actually burnt up two of them and they literally burnt. So go ahead and spend the money instead of buying multiple. <laughs> here I'm just te te checking for smoothness and uh, I'm about 320 grit here. And it's looking pretty good to me. I worked it up to about a thousand uh, grit just because uh, it leaves a really nice shine on there. That's the final uh, sanding pad. Here I'm marking off uh, the needle portion of it. I went ahead and put a reference point and then uh, I think I did about two and a half inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and work it down to a reasonable point but leave enough on there that it stays on the lathe securely. And I'm just using a uh, 3 8 spindle gouge. And I go ahead and sand it to the uh, same grit that I did the rest of the needle on. I'm 
actually use some uh, garnet sandpaper there. It works just as well. So if I have some leftover uh, sandpaper, I'll go ahead and use that on the lathe. This other end is going to be for the button, but uh, I had to sharpen my uh, parting tool. And I just used a uh, medium grit diamond plate with a little WD-40 on there to get a nice edge. It's a lot quicker than going to a grinding wheel. And that's about it for there. So I had some nice maple burl knobs that I didn't know what I was going to do use them for, and this seemed like a perfectly good project for it. Here I'm using a 5 8 bowl gouge just to uh, get it round, and uh, it gets round quite quickly. So I went ahead and bored out where the uh, needle will go in, and now I'm going to cut in a spot for a reference. I don't like being right close to the chuck. It's just my personal preference. I don't like uh, if I get a catch hitting steel. <laughs> so I just rounded it out to the dimension that I chose. Now I'm going to go ahead and make it a nice shape. Uh, this actually turned quite well. Uh, came off in nice ribbons. It was really dry. I didn't know how it was going to turn, but you can see the nice uh, shavings coming off of there, and it really didn't need too much sanding uh, when I was done with it. I actually made a little mistake uh, with one of these. I went and burnished it, and I held the shavings on there too long, and it burnt. So I had to go back and re-sand it. That was a... Uh, had good intentions, but... Uh, turned out to backfire on me and I had to go back and resand it. But I went up to about a thousand and here we go. I burnt it and I had to go back and resand it all. Uh, good thing there was no sound. Because I uh, wasn't too pleased with myself. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, part this guy off. I uh, finished the ends, you know, sanded them down, make them look nice. Uh, here it was a little uneven, so I just went ahead and took a uh, bazooki saw and cut a little bit off. Now here, when I mixed my five minute epoxy, I kind of did not think ahead. So I mixed a whole bunch on my cardboard. It's like, oh yeah, you know, we're ready to go. We'll get them both done, you know, be all set. So here I am with my little paintbrush that I trimmed up getting it in there and uh, got the first one almost set I put a little bit extra in there so we're done there and now ah it was too hard I had to remix it so I just mixed it inside the knob itself and it worked a whole lot better so if I make some more that's the way I'm gonna do it but those are them I'm gonna rub some tongue oil on there and some wax and they're all done Please like and subscribe if you like it. Please comment and uh, share with your friends. And I'll see you guys in the next video.